Hi, and thank you for joining me in another program of Painting with Tali, your art collection. Today, we are going to do a portrait uh, commemorating one year's anniversary of the death of our wonderful princess of Wales, Princess Diana. And uh, the first time I did this, it was in silence, but uh, since this is one year of her death, I um, will be talking today and doing the portrait of her. So let's get right away in doing that skin tone. Okay, let's get right away doing the skin tone. And let's test, let's test right here. We got to test. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful, that's what I want, yes. Okay, got to be very careful. Let's go around here. Okay. Now what I used here was pencil, and I didn't use charcoal in this case. No charcoal has been used, just pencil. Very similar how I, I did the Marilyn Monroe portrait. And, okay, let's get that down there and down here. And it's sprayed with a fixative, Grombacher fixative, which does the trick for me. All right. Um, we're going to let that dry a little bit, and we're going with the hair. And the hair has to be of another type of tonality, and that's going to be the uh, raw umber. Because the burnt sienna, I use it for skin. And then we're going to go and then bring out the whites of the face, which is teeth and eyeballs. OK, but right now, the raw sienna does the perfect tone for blonde hair. It's very deep right here. As I was looking into uh, the documentation and photographs of her, I noticed that she had two tiaras. And uh, I think she's using the family tiara in this photograph that I got from her, her family's tiara. And um, I think the tiara that had the pearls in it. There was two, this one and another one that had pearls in it, dangling. I think that was the Princess of Wales tiara. In other words, I think that went back into storage for the next Princess of Wales to wear. It's very sad that we have this woman no longer with us because she was a great catalyst of solving um, evils that, um, that uh, faced our world. Her um, great help with the AIDS epidemic was actually outstanding in the sense that uh, she stood up for these individuals who suffered from this terrible illness or disease, of course. Um, we've got 22 minutes. Getting in more deeper lights. Getting in more deeper lights. 
And then we'll put some highlights on that. A little bit of water because we're a little dry right now. And yes, getting that hair effect for her. OK. A little bit deeper here. I know I got to hurry up. Got to be very disciplined right here so I can finish this for you. Uh-huh. When I'm halfway satisfied with something that I've, uh, that's on the canvas, the brush effects, I try to leave it alone because I know that I'm not going to have that extra time to uh, do what I need to do now. Um, about that tiara, uh, that tiara, I have to kind of like glaze it in, in another tonality that has to have some blue in it. Has to have some blue in it, yes. Another tonality that has some blue in it. Let's, let's get a color that has some blue, some blue, okay. Well, a little bit of blue. Okay, that'll be fine. I hate screwing these things back on. Oh, I just hate screwing these things back on. Okay. Okay. What we're going to do, yeah, just, it has to, it has to be covered all. Yeah, it has to be covered all. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's going to dry. until we need to get back to it. Okay, now super whites for the teeth and white of the eyes. We gotta get back to that. Okay, here we go, screwing it back on, you know. I hate it. I get so mad you can hire me as a hitman. Okay, all right, hold on a second, baby. Here we go, mixing the colors. No, just mixing the white because I need super white. A little bit creamy, more water to it. Your acrylic paint just is, is, you just got to get your acrylic paint and you got to test it. Watery, thick, that, you know, I can't explain this. On, I mean, this is not, I did this show so I can become well known around the most known artist in town. I mean, I am, you know, I'm a great teacher, but it's like a half hour show. All right. Um, Okay. Perfect. What do we have? 18 minutes. Very careful with this. Okay, the, the lips have a gloss up here, a shine, and a shine here from that photograph. She's smiling. It's a very beautiful angle of her. Okay, now let's go to Tiara time. Oh, yeah, and um, these are bobbles that she has on her ear. I don't know whether they're pearls or whatever, you know. I don't know. We'll put that in there. Um, where are we? Okay. Let's go back to that Tiara. Since we're on the white little dotsies, and um, it's time for that deep voice, isn't it? 
I know you guys miss it once in a while, and I just uh, try to keep keep you um, hanging on there. Don't lose hope. Okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let me see. How are we going to do this visual effect? Okay. Uh huh. You know that. Oh, well, something so important is that we may lose somebody, somebody so important to us it, here in the material world as we go along trying to make things, make it a better world, you know, when people care. But when these people leave us and they are no, they are no longer physically with us, we still can consult with them because they come into our thoughts. They're still with us. They're always telling us. I mean, when someone loses a loved one, um, he only lost this person into another dimension. They can still see us, and, and, uh, they tr uh, and somehow, in our dreams, we, we see them, and, and we talk to them. But the spirit does not die. They say that it weighs one gram because they made tests. They have made tests when somebody uh, is dying or suddenly, uh, suddenly they die. You know, they just finish dying. Uh, they weigh one gram less. I've heard of that. And uh, and what's most important about this uh, beautiful woman who was very advantaged. I mean, who, who had advantages to make a difference, is that she exercised that. And, uh, and it's, I was thinking of um, trying to get together the different uh, speeches uh, and, and, and uh, public addresses that she has done in the past to listen to her and understand what she was trying to focus on or trying to make us notice that should be better, that should be improved. Um, she was a great humanitarian and set out a beautiful example for us to follow. She was one person who had very little love from very important, from people that were very important to her. And when you lack this, but within your nature, you're a caring, loving person, I think you accentuate this factor more upon others. You know? And the cute thing about the tiara, which I noticed, is that they put velvet on, on the rim of it, but the velvet at the same color tonality of hair. And, you know, these are these people who wear tiaras. Um, okay, uh, she loved really bright colors. And she had those gorgeous sapphire blue eyes. And many of the photographs that I've seen of her I've noticed when she had the filters, the, the uh, contact filters, which I do not, I mean, I mean, I do not really approve when I see natural, beautiful eyes that are blue. When they have these filters on them, I can tell they're artificial, and so they look so uh, plastic and mannequin-like that uh, they lose the depth and beauty of what their actual color is. And so there are some photos with her contacts. I noticed she has the contacts, uh, filters, and I know that's not the natural color because as an artist I do pay attention to the color of a person's eye. Okay. And here I am. I'm doing kind of like a deep tone here. But 
I'm doing that to it. Yeah. And, okay. And the rest of it, I had to do like a little purple line to it. More water, sweetie. I dab with my fingers. Sometimes you can use tissue paper, but it's quicker this way. And then I want to make sure I get the lashes in. Now, one thing about her makeup, uh, her makeup design is that when you bring her, because she was a gorgeous schnozzly kind of girl, you know, she had her schnozzle. But she was the, uh, the most beautiful schnozzly woman I've ever seen. And uh, anyway, she had her particular beauty. Um, and anyway, but the thing about when a, wo when a woman has that, the nose that is a little more prominent, does the mouth kind of small, what you do, what they did to her, what she was starting to do in her makeup was make her eyelashes monstrosity long. Um, that really works for her. Like with Liza Minnelli, I mean, they make Liza Minnelli's li eyebrows. I mean, they, I think they take the engineers from the Golden Gate Bridge to put hers together. I mean, they're so, so long. I mean, there's just like, boom! Because Liza really has a sad, uh, her face is not very good. It's not, it's, it's just too, too, too original. Um, well, her, she's not pretty. Liza's not pretty, really. She never was. Uh, but that's why they made those monstrosities. Eyebrow, eyelashes on her, and then really structurized her eyebrows. They do that with Oprah too. And darling, if okay, I I, I love makeup, so um, if you need any makeup tips, just call my voicemail. I'm not. I, I used to do makeup for for major cosmetic lines, but you know, I don't anymore. I I think they make you very replaceable. They do that on purpose. They don't really value you as the artist that you are. You know, I, I, um, I, I just don't uh, do it anymore, darling. Not anymore. Let me see. For some reason, the highlight uh, of the eyes is not where it should be. The little uh, thing, no, 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 uh, should be there. Yes, right there. And then turquoisey brightness. Yeah, that'll be better. Uh-huh, but dab it, dab it. Much better, much better. Okay. Huh. Violet is needed. Uh, uh, you got to, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. The talking TV artist. Oh. Um, now, super black baby. Super black baby. Hold on. I only got, oh, seven minutes, my God. Well, the eyes had to be so important here, excuse me. Oh, paint! I hate it when it doesn't paint. Okay, six minutes. All right, now, we only got six minutes to go here. I gotta paint like lightning flash here. I'm gonna shut up. Um, where is it? Oh no. Uh. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Is that one it? No, is this one? Yes. 
Okay. Define her brows, darling, her brows. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Define her brows. For those brows, baby, yes. Okay, define those brows, honey. Now, we need the definition of this, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Oh, five minutes. The definition there, baby, yes. Definitions, definitions. Okay. Uh, the arch of the eye, yes, 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 yes. The arch of the eye, oh, oh, I hate it when it doesn't, when these brushes are like the wrong ones, like you're with the wrong uh, instrument. You know, you want to draw and it's not doing it. Using, you, you know, open heart surgery, open heart surgery with a wrench. Oh, okay. And uh, shadowing right there and up here, yes. We got five minutes, not so bad. Uh, shattering right here, baby. Shattering, baby, shattering, sweetie. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh, I gotta be, keep on watching this model. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Okay, you guys are looking how I do the technique here, you know, getting a pretty good idea. Because I'm going to right now go back to the ranch for a second as I compose here the skin tonality. And I'm trying here to Get the white highlights of the skin for that, just a little bit of light there. Uh, and uh, over here a little bit, yes. We got three minutes. And on the lips, where are we? Over there, it needs more over here, a little bit there, huh? Yes, it does. Uh-huh, and, and, about there, yes it does, right there, and I'm blending. And where else, where else, where else, where else? About there, huh, about there, yes. Blending, blending. And a little there and shine there. Well, anyway, a uh, little bit there won't hurt, two minutes. And let's get um, some Something going on with the lips, darling. Uh, with the lips, baby. With the lips. With the lips have to be colored in, honey. Hold on. You want to get her that nice color on the lips. Uh-huh. Okay. And then we want to dab it off a little bit. Okay. Just get it, the tint in there nicely. 
Lovely. Lovely. Okay, and um, we want some of that turquoise for the background. And we have seconds. And we're blending that to give it a little bit of background there. And now we're going to uh, get a little bit of, we got one minute actually, but I'll, I'll just uh, make, I'll make sure I get this uh, blush in here, sweetie, for her. She looks very rosy. Okay, sweetie, she looks wonderful. A little bit of blush there. She did have a very blushy tone about her. Okay. Okay, she looks cute. Maybe a little too blushed up, but... Okay, now it's perfect. Now we can put this away, and... We are cleaning up her teeth here with white, darling. With white, yes, baby. With white, with white, sweetie. And getting that... Super highlight of that and super highlight of here that she has on her lips and the eyes, of course, the eyes. And there she is. Oh, these little rhinestones here, let's make them pretty. And there she is, baby. Uh, let's sign this, honey. Oh, yes. T-A-L-I-90. Eight, in memory of you, Diana, if you can hear me, if someday this goes out on satellite and someday you'll see the vibes wherever universe may take you. We all love you. This is Tali saying goodbye. Hi, and thanks for joining me in another program of Painting with Tali, your art collection. Although in this program we won't be doing painting, we'll be doing charcoal, uh, your charcoal technique. In this case, 
Today we're doing an homage to the great goddess of celluloid, and that is Marilyn Monroe. Of course, I'm a big fan of hers, and I know that a lot of people there out there are also fans of Marilyn. So we're doing a portrait of her in the type of portrait work that I do uh, that has to do with charcoal, and uh, later on the acrylic paint will be on the second show. This is the first show. Okay, now as you can see, we have our drawing in the rough, and I have my example of Marilyn here. Uh, this has not been sprayed as of yet, so it can, it's very vulnerable to being softened up if we need to soften up some areas of the charcoal as, this, as if we want to do the hair, get a little more softer the line, if we want to do that. Uh, over here if we want to soften these lines. So it softens it somewhat the stronger uh, stroke that you have made with your charcoal. One other thing that you are going to do with your charcoal stem and you are going to, for example, the charcoal stem that I'm using is the one that's finest quality. It's the Grombacher number 40. They donated that so thank you very much Grombacher the people at Kolinor. Um, so what I get, I get the charcoal and I put, um, of course, if many of you have seen my shows before, I put, I add to it and I twist to it a stem that is uh, made out of um, masking tape. So that's how I make the stem to it so that my, when, when I press, it's not so, so strong. And then when I want it stronger, I hold it closer and, and get more of that, get more of a deeper tone to the charcoal. And then you're going to see how you can get even more deep in the tone when you spray with the Grombacher Mist, uh, Grombacher Mist and Workable Fixative, which is the one that really does the miracles for me. It's going to be this one. Um, well, so when you spray with that, you can get the deeper and darker tones of uh, lights and darks into a super jet black if you want. Uh, okay, so let's go on with our drawing softening. We got tight, we've got stronger strokes uh, that we are going to soften and put strokes in between so that it looks more airbrush looking instead of uh, instead of just charcoal looking, charcoal looking strokes. And so, here we go, and we are kind of noticing our drawing, and see right there we did it kind of strong, that stroke. Okay, so when you do a stroke that's kind of strong that you don't like, you get your kneaded rubber eraser, and the one that I use is Design. It says 1225, kneaded rubber uh, design. So I can pick up whatever I need to pick up, which I didn't like, that came out too strong. And, I, and you can mold it to a point and make the effects that you need. Well, create what you need, or erase how you need to erase. OK. So we have, so we're going to concentrate right now on the lines that we see that are thick, that look like scratches, and we're going to make them look a little more blended is what we want to do. And and this is how it is. It's tiny, tiny little scratches. And little by little, I get what I want. So notice that I'm holding my charcoal stem at the end of my masking tape extension that I made for it. Okay. Okay, see there we go. I keep on looking at my drawing. See, now it's, now it's coming in. I can see it softening in. 
I use the charcoal lightly. I'm, I, I'm just whispering to this with the charcoal stem and getting what I want, okay? So she has bangs in this photograph. This photograph was uh, a still that from that movie she didn't finish, Something's Got to Give. And I've made it before on another program, but in the small canvas board. Right now, we're not using canvas board. This is a um, canvas that I primed myself. And it's, I don't, I, and this one, I, I, when you prime your canvas, so you buy your stretchers. Uh, I think this one is 16 by 20. And you, you put them together. They assemble pretty easy. And then you get your canvas and you cut it about, um, about, about an inch thick, uh, an inch uh, of separation so that it turns, so that you can turn it around and staple it into the back side of the canvas, not on the sides of the canvas. It gives you a, a cleaner look to the canvas. Then don't worry about stretching. The, well, your canvas is naked virgin. Don't worry about stretching it hard, stretching it. Just leave it loose, naturally staple it on the back, and it's kind of loose. When you, and then you, you paint the sides first with your, um, your whitewash thing or whatever, your uh, primer, and then the, the inside. And this is the type of easel that can go into a table, like if I was to push this down, it goes completely flat. It goes up and down flat. So I have it flat, and then I uh, pour on the canvas paint, and then with a brush, go over it and let it dry. And that's it. And the effects are very different. So this is more of the professional tally, uh, tally work. Uh, so that's why I decided to make a spe this special program for you, more advanced artists that paint on canvas that you stretch yourself on your own, like you kids that go to art school. OK. So see right here, I want to. OK, now we have too much pigment on there, so I can take it off with the point of my kneaded rubber eraser. Does the trick for me. OK. OK. I'm just looking for big spaces where I can fill in, big spaces that look scratchy, that the, where I can, where I can, uh, fill in to make it look smoother. See, I'm, I'm making the rough, the rough drawing of this more softer, polishing it, yes, that's the word. So I'm polishing this. Okay, let's get here with the lips. Look how I'm using the stroke on that. Round, 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 round. Okay, round is the stroke. Then more defined here. A little more defined here. Up and down, up and down, just to get blockage on that. Define the line of the lips, because these are in the rough, honey. This is in the rough. OK. So 
It's always a keen look at your drawing because you have to be geographically on the right spot and then use the resource, the engineering resource for that area, whether you're doing a, a round, whether, whether on the eye area, okay, we go loopy, loopy, circle, 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 okay, that's what we want to do there. That's what I do there in these cases. And I fill it in, okay, and then... And then if I need just some shadow or some sharper ones, then I do that. Okay. If I want this to be brighter there, I erase it out with my Dedent Rubber Eraser, as you can see. Let's go to the, this eye over here. Okay. Okay, let's look well at our design. Now she wore these long, very long false eyelashes, but I try to make them look softer. You know, she was an expert in doing her makeup, a great artist doing her makeup, uh, because you rarely see photographs of her with those horrible big long lashes and some of these photographs of the stars, they put these horrible lashes. I mean, I've seen some Lana, Lana Turner shots with these lashes that look like, you know, I mean, uh, they look like they were from Bristol Meyer. I mean, I, I mean uh, they look, you know, they look like some quality, uh, they look like some, they look like, like sanity brushes or something. I don't know. They were horrible. Um, and so Marilyn, on, in her makeup, she had a lot of guidance. So she did a she did which do her makeup really well. She would do it very very good. Um, okay. We're doing this fine. Okay. We want lash effects, so this, so this is what we're doing, this loop way. It's going to give me what I want. Fabulous. This is doing what I want. Need some deepness here, some deepness there, baby? Yes. Yes. And then some deepness in the pupil. Deepness, deepness. Mm-hmm. There's some shadow here. I think who took these photographs is that friend of her that was a lover of her. His, his name is Saltzer. He's been a friend of hers for years. Okay. I mean, all her life. She's always had him as a friend. Okay, smaller lashes. Not too many bottom lashes on this girl. Okay, crease up here. Uh huh. Just blow when you don't when you got too much of something that you don't want, and it doesn't come out the way you want it. Then you just touch up what you blew off on the other ones that you wanted. Okay. That nose there has something funny about it. Let's blow there. Soften it up. What is happening to that nose? She looks like Muggsy. Okay, here we go with our brush. We can't figure it out, baby. All right, so here's with the brush softening what I want to be soft. So you're painting with your brush with charcoal, practically. That's what's going on. 
So the skin is where I use mostly my brush effects, the softening of the brush where I need it. I'm going to be doing Carleen Herrera's portrait. And I met her in San Francisco. I told her that I want to do her portrait. So on another program, we'll pro I'll probably show you that. OK, we got 10 minutes. OK, we want to just get this a little darker. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, we're going to spray it. So we're going to spray just generally. Just go back with your line. Eyebrows there, dark shadow there, dark shadow there. Just you, When you're spraying, you kind of draw what you need to spray on here. You go on the, guide, the drawing guide. Okay. Okay, that seems to be enough for now. What's going to go on is that it has to set. And the way you know how it's set, and we've got to wait a second or so. I mean, like, maybe a couple of seconds. The way you know it's set, get your clean little finger, press, and look at the, if you have any pigments, and it's perfect. Since you don't, it sets well what you want it to set. OK. So let's check here. Clean finger, press, and <clears throat> it seems to be pretty well set. All right. Now we want that deeper tones in that, in the eyelash area. OK. So now that, we, now that we put spray on there, and we're going back to drawing, we will achieve a darker tone. See? It helps us achieve a darker tone where we want that darker tone. We want it here inside the pupil. So OK, great. We want it here around here. Wonderful. OK. OK. Fabulous now. There's a sharp. During uh, this time, uh, Liz Taylor, when she was filming this movie, Liz Taylor was doing Cleopatra. And they asked, and, and, and Marilyn did this part, a nude scene that she's in the water in the swimming pool. And the magazines around the world wanted to publish these photos. So she said, as long as you take Liz Taylor of all the magazine covers, you know. So they took Taylor out of all the magazine covers, because she had a rivalry with Taylor. Now, Taylor was, I mean, I've heard Taylor, you know, things that, well, Taylor, I don't know, they just had a rivalry. And Miss Taylor right now is, is recovering, um, and she's done a great job for helping the AIDS uh, issue. And now Sharon Stone is taking over that, so. I'm thinking of doing an exhibition on, on Faces of Hollywood. And, uh, but I would like it towards uh, the benefit of breast cancer, okay, which is another important issue. Um, and, and do it on women of Hollywood, the famous women of Hollywood. 
I have at home all these photos that I've been collecting for that exhibition. So, just had to get in contact with those people, I guess. Okay, see the eyebrow darker now? Mm hmm and over here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, there's a little brightness here on that. Okay. I do changes on, on, on the, on, on, of my own to perfect the effect that I want. You know, there are some changes here. So now that I have to do the pupil here, I'm holding the charcoal stem itself where it gives me what I want. Um, and it seems to me like the pupils are a little bit out of orbit. No, not really. Well, hold on. Kind of. I'll erase a little bit. There. OK, that's much better. Uh-huh. All right, there's going to be a, a circle there. A circle here and a circle here on that. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. Deepness, deepness. Okay. Uh -huh, we didn't want that much, so we, sp we blew on it a little bit. Okay. As you can see, we got that deeper tone that we wanted. On the lashes. Okay. Soft, soft. The under shadow. And the bottom lid cuts the eye pupil a little bit, you know. It, it rests a little. The eye pupil is resting a little bit on there. It sunsets, you know, on it a little bit, just a tad. OK. Loopy, loopy, loopy. Loopy, loopy, loopy. Okay, and the mouth area, the nostril area, which is these deep places that we want a deeper tone. I got two and 50 minutes left. Okay. Let me go here. So our drawing, where we wanted our deeper shadows, we know that she has her teeth design, and we know that we have that upper, upper lip, strong. We got two minutes. This one up here. OK, we erase. See, now you could erase because you have to worry about your original uh, paint, uh, drawing underneath because that's already set. So your new lines that are going over can easily be erased when you need them to be erased. And we now we need this. We got 1 minute and 42 something seconds. Softening up the lips. Softening up the lips. and. 
Of course, we need to spray that over again, spray that over again, spray that over again so I can set, set, spray that over on the lips. So far, so good. Huh. Well, oh yeah, she has a little bit. That's not the one I want. A little bit there on the mow there. Hmm. I've still got a minute. Let's um, make sure the lips, the teeth are coming out nicely. As you can see, I did a line that I didn't like, so we erased it. Okay. There we are. More definition here. And on our next program, we're going to be adding color to that. And remember, it's going to be me, the canvas, the cameras, and all you wonderful people out there in the suburbs. This is Tali signing off. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille's. <laughs>